think the availability of resources. And let me give you an example in the public school. Go to Provider, go to the NC schools. There is no football field. There is no baseball field. They have a gymnasium. And um, so you don't have decorating, you don't have the kids. I mean, you come out here to Utica Junior High, you go to Fort Gibbs, they all got, they got fields, they got base pumping. The inner cities, they play at city parks. So they don't, you know, even in the school, you don't have that camaraderie on the fields, the decorating, and doing those things, because the schools don't have it. So the resources are just not being put in there, and you bring a lot of, of kids into those schools with less resources. White kids have resources, and it hasn't changed from the past. Like during the integration, they used to say a lot of black people, kids don't swim. They closed all the pools. The white kids had country clubs, parks, those things. I remember when the Y got a pool, it was a big deal because now we had somewhere to learn to swim. So uh, they make a joke about all oh, these black kids don't swim, but it's not a joke. They closed it. Well, in my opinion, uh, I would say, you know, based on my years as a principal, being in education, my years I'm a father, um, it's the, the family structure is not there uh, like it used to be. Uh, the community structure is not there like it used to be. Uh, the family structure uh, coming up in my days, of course, you had dad there, and, you know, mom was there. And you also had grandmother and aunt and all of them. And that, especially in the urban area, is, is not there. Uh, you look at communities, and I know a lot of people from Jackson, and they talked about in their community, they had Mr. and Mrs. so-and-so up the street, and those communities stayed together for 20 years. But now you have... The, the, you know, people move so much that those communities are not there. And so if people in the community don't know each other, then, you know, it's, it's, it's just everybody, the kids go out and do stuff bad and nobody's going to say anything, you know. Where it used to be, up to, you go up the street, oh, oh, you so-and-so, -and -so, you, you must Johnson child. Yeah, I'm going to tell him, or either, they might whip you before you go home, but you can't do that now. They don't do that now because, man, you do that now, then that, that's a whole nother fight there, Doc. <laughs> but it, it's, it's uh, the family structure. Um, you have younger parents. They're working, trying to do their career and, 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 and do them, <laughs> you know. And, and so they're not taking time out to, to really uh, provide the, the, the teaching and the raising of the children. And the children out there on their own. You know, I always try to, to look at the world through the kids' eyes as they're coming up now. And, and it's difficult. There's a lot of pressure on the kids. I, I recognize that. There's a lot of pressure on them. So they need somebody strong in their life to guide them and show them the way. Yeah, you're going to make mistakes, but this is how you bounce back. Don't let people lead you astray. You know, you have to. You know, you got to get kids in the church, too. Kids got to be in the church. You know, they got to be in the church. If you can't do it by yourself, there are people in the church that's going to help you. You know, you got to get grounded in the Bible. That's the, that's the, the, the road map or instructions for living. And people, uh, you know, fail to read that Bible. There's too many youngsters in your inner cities uh, to not be uh, made busy, uh, kept busy, uh, you know. When I look at, the, for instance, the uh, Jackson Public School where you got something like, uh, 16 junior high school. You have something like 13 or 14 elementary school. Now that's a lot of kids. That's 12 or 1300 boys and girls that are going to be looking for something to do at that time when they get out of school between, between May and when they go back to school in August or uh, 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 September. So I'm convinced even here in let's say Utica or Bolton is imperative that, that, that these uh, activities and these programs be made available to our kids. And we're not trying to make professional ball players out of them. All that takes care of itself. But, but I, I, I just believe with all my heart when I look at my upbringing and the time that my parents had us to spend in these activities when we had time, that it certainly had an impact on my life and other young men in the community. 
I think that it comes down to activity in general. Um, and sports is one such activity that's available. Now the difference with sports is that there's different sports. There's, there's sports for girls, there's sports for boys, there's basketball, football, baseball. There's a lot of different uh, types of sports that you can get involved in. So the, the lack of sports is a big contributor uh, to the crime and to the violence that we see uh, in inner city Jackson today. And so we're doing our small part um, to give the kids an alternative, uh, a diversion from getting into the other activities that are out there that aren't so wholesome. Mm. Uh, that, 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 that's a tough question. Uh, but I, I think it really still goes to the have and have nots. Uh, when you look at in the white communities, there's so much to do. Um, it's almost like those communities are built for, uh, for the youth in the community. Uh, in the inner cities, and, and you know, I can, I can attest to it, uh, for us, it's all about us, and sometimes we forget about the kids because of some of the things we didn't have to do, uh, we weren't uh, available to as, as youth. So we, we have a tendency when we're adults to kind of take care of us and forget about the kids.